Hello and welcome to the 10th lesson in the Zellen Art Class series. My name is Grant Preston and today we'll be looking at conceptualizing abstract art. In other words, having a concept before we start the abstract painting. So today my concept is uh, the doors of life that open to us and those that close through our life series. So how I've started here is by just scampering out some lines uh, of doors. There will be another one with some figure coming out of the door in the foreground. And another door here, keeping that line coming across the abstract, keeping the strength of construction in my composition. My second figure or image walking away down through life comes out of this door, walks and maybe goes out of that door. And here another door, smaller door maybe that leads to this guy and then maybe the last door there. So then we've got the movement coming across this way with this larger image coming into the foreground, our midground and our background. So now we are working on a conceptualized composition that has um, some definitive meaning to it. Um, I often work in uh, no uh, composition, no meaning, no anything, just absolute informal, art informal, meaning I just go for it, or I contrive the composition with a little story behind it to give it some meaning. Uh, also that the viewer can follow some composition or construction that uh, the eye can follow. So here we've got some movement. Uh, it needs some weight here, so our darker area will be there, our black. We need something in the foreground here to show um, something's going to happen. So we'll just put in a some lines that give it some strength. There it needs some strength there. So I don't want to overdo it. I've just grounded the painting with some strength lines there. So now I'm basically ready, ready to paint. So uh, let's start off with the darker side of the painting and do our blacks first. The Zellen, the craft acrylics, which is called Zell Craft, and it's a mid-range, not expensive acrylic paint. I'm going to use this rather large palette knife just to put in my first colours. So we know this is going to be darker here. Dark will always come off the right hand side of our lines. There will be less dark here, so I'll just put a thin line in there. Now my black will probably be strong down here, but always going to the right. So it doesn't fade off to the right, it comes from the right side. So I'll have it thicker there, it will be pitch black here. And I might as well include that down off this end of the painting as well. We really get some dark movement happening there. And almost the light comes, it gets lighter and lighter as we come to this side of the painting. Right, 
that's enough of the black. You can see what I've done there. We've got our dark side working to the light. Staying with my darker colors. windows and door shapes intact. Um, what I mean by that is keeping my squares so that they can become an image later on. That square there for instance. Keeping my strength lines, what I mean strength is, is these lines that are coming down. Now the paint I'm putting on is quite thick at the moment. It's because we're going to be working over it later on and I want it as a texture for the bottom. Uh, so when I cut it or uh, through it, then I will see some other colours underneath. So I keep it wet enough. I'm quite thick and I even take some and really, really make it thick. Alright, that's enough of our purple. So we've got purple and black so far. Blue. Blue will go nicely. Remember, since this is wet on wet, it doesn't really matter. So here we want to keep, keep our squares because we're talking of doors which are sort of rectangles, I'll keep some idea of of the geometric um, which is giving us strength in our composition. We'll break it later on but as long as it's there now We've got something to work on. It's always nice for colour. To flow across the canvas, so here we're getting our blue to work nicely now, but it's got to enter somewhere. So we'll have the blue entering down here from the bottom left. And maybe just edging off to here a bit. Put a bit in there as well. And just maybe a bit going off. basic background colors, my three basic dark colors, to almost fill the entire painting. Where you find it a little um, thin, just add a bit on top. Um, that's fine. Now I only want to do three basic dark colors, so, so it's quite, quite heavy, you see, I'm quite 
quite thick and I'm not blending the colours too much at the moment. I'm letting them sit individually. And only when they're there will we decide which one's got to blend into the other one. We're doing a bit of it now, but...
All I'm doing now, as you might not be able to see it from that far, is I'm using the back end of a brush just to cut the paint to give it some direction. It's just telling me where I can do my overlays. And where I want strength, I reconfirm it. I want that strength in my composition, otherwise it gets weak. Alright, that's enough of that. Just clean the back of that brush. Now I'll go on to my mid-tones and I'll probably use a brush. So let's get it. This is a nice colour. It's called Ocean. And I'm going to use a brush to apply this. Again, I don't find it's the right consistency. So what we do is, when we're working wet on wet, is just to keep our paint wet. We keep spritzering it. And if you're not happy with the consistency of your paint, then get it down to the right flow. Um, you'll get used to this as you play more with acrylic paint, you'll learn to control it. Um, sometimes you want it thick so you leave it open to dry, other times you'll add water to just get the right consistency because consistency is important. Now we're going to do some uh, second degree um, colour. that. 
Then there was a door here, and that did that. Then there was a strength line across here that gave movement. Where we again, we our color is sourced, right? So that color is sourced there. Now I'm going to do remember we've still got white probably to come. So we'll just put a on this line, we'll make it work across the page. dribbles in here. These are all building textural layers. Um, so I make sure that it's feeding out the nozzle in the front. Just push it to the front. And then So, with the white now, let's have a look at what um, what white. What happens when we put on the white? All right. So now we've got some people, right? Bam. walking through life. I don't know whether I've achieved it or not, but um, some areas I do like. Let's just go into one or two of them in detail. Um, there, interesting. Slow pan across just to give you what the surface textures are like. I'd just like to add that uh, what I've tried to do during these lessons is to give you a mindset that you need to paint abstract painting and not just a visual um, way of achieving it. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and do join me next time for the next Zevon Art Class.
So at this point, I'd just like to remind you that what I'm trying to do is to establish a mindset you require to do abstract painting and not to show you visually what you should be painting.